Hello and welcome to the Summit 2020 by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. The Summit is a platform where leaders, innovators and pioneers share their perspectives on how best to build an economy which is resilient and regenerative by design. In this series, we're exploring what the circular economy means to leading financial institutions. My name is Emily Healy. I'm the project manager for our finance initiative at the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. And today I'm delighted to have Emma Navarro from the European Investment Bank joining me virtually in the studio. Welcome, Emma. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have you here. How are you today? I'm I'm also delighted to be here and participating in this important summit. Thank you. So the EIB has been financing circular economy projects and producing thought leadership on this topic for several years now. So I wanted to kick off by asking what led you to start exploring the circular economy? Well, sustainability is at the core of what we do. And as the EU's lending arm, the EU's bank, uh, we have long-standing experience in financing projects related to, to the environment and, and climate, including uh, waste treatment projects and this uh, sort of projects with high environmental uh, component. So it was in a way a natural move to look into ways to support the, the circular economy. And in fact, uh, we started an active engagement in the circular economy back in 2014. And by then, uh, I think that the, the, the knowledge about the circular economy uh, was not very, very high, especially in the, in the financial sector community. But right now, the situation has improved. And, and I think that the financial community is more aware of the opportunities of the circular economy, and in particular in Europe, the circular economy is now very big on the agenda because this is one of the pillars of, of the, the EU's, the European Green Deal. And uh, there is awareness that we will not achieve our climate neutrality goals uh, if we do not uh, make the, the transition to a circular economy. And of course, the EU bank is, is committed and ready to continue supporting the circular economy projects. As a bank, where do you see the greatest opportunities for circular economy to create value? Well, the circular economy is, uh, has a great potential today. Uh, we know that our current growth model, our lineal model, is not sustainable and that we need to, to change. So there is a lot of opportunity uh, for businesses to, to change their, their business models to embrace circularity, because this is something that we we'll need to, to continue in the future. So uh, for the financial sector, as we will need to, to provide capital for those companies that are changing their business models, uh, there is also a big business opportunity. And I think that the, 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 the banks and the financial sector in general today are more aware of the importance of sustainability and they are embracing sustainability. And we can see the circular economy as part as this also this, this bigger uh, trend. And for a public institution like the EIB, which has uh, such a focus on sustainability, I think that trying to support and encourage this transition to, to the circular economy is, is also key and, and as very important in, in our activity. And can you, give you, can you give me some examples of what the EIB is already doing to finance the circular economy and, and capture these opportunities you're talking about? We, we have uh, three big interrelated uh, actions. We provide finance. We also provide advisory support, which sometimes is very much needed to make uh, projects that uh, are, are based on very, very good business idea, but they are not a, a structure in an attractive financial a way to go forward. And, and, and this is also one part of our services. And then the other and very important part is to raise awareness and promote partnerships to, to promote the circular economy. 
and we finance very diverse type of uh, circular economy projects. Uh, uh, for example, uh, we have uh, provided support to Eco Titanium, which is the first industrial plant to recycle and remelt uh, aviation uh, grade scrap uh, metal. Uh, and, and this was very, very innovative. And, and this is also this was also a very important project because of the benefits in terms of reducing the dependence to imported uh, uh, titanium, but also for the impact in the reduction of uh, carbon emission, which was estimated at, at more than 100,000 tons uh, per year. Uh, but we have also other type of projects. We are, uh, for example, we have supported a very innovative manufacturer to produce 3D printers that use recycled plastics to make them uh, other products. And we are also supported, uh, for example, a Romanian food producer that is developing software and hardware to track uh, food waste and so prevent food waste. Uh, uh, and we are uh, promoting partnerships, uh, for example, with uh, CDP, the, the Italian National Promotional Bank. We have developed a financial uh, investment platform that focuses on circular and climate projects. And this is also very important, these type of platforms, because sometimes the circular uh, economy projects as, are very small. Uh, and for, for a financier, a large financier, it is uh, given this granularity, it is more difficult. So creating this type of platforms and partnerships with commercial banks through public banks is also very helpful. No, it's great to hear about the power of collaboration and partnerships. And, and what has been the response from the, st the stakeholders of the bank more broadly? Well, I think that the response has been very, very positive. In fact, I, I, I believe that investors are more and more aware on the need to, to well, to make this transition and they, they need to support this type of, of circular projects that are in, even are growing and they need also capital. Uh, we have, uh, um, for example, uh, different uh, uh, partnerships with different national promotional banks. We have created the, the circular economy initiative to, to provide uh, in, in five years, 10 billion euros to, to uh, circular economy uh, projects. And uh, well, ourselves, our institution in the last five years have tried to strengthen our support to, to circular economy in, in terms of financing we have supported more than 100 uh, projects in these five years with more than 2.5 billion uh, euros. But apart from that, uh, we are developing guides. We are trying to, to, well, to uh, explore how better address the financing challenges of those projects and adapt to, to those uh, projects. And I think that there has been a clear recognition of the role that public banks and the, the EU uh, uh, bank can play also uh, in supporting those projects, but also in uh, enabling this type of alliances. And in fact, uh, last year, we, we received the, the runner-up award of, of the World Economic Forum on, 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 on circularity. So I think that this, this shows the, the recognition that we, we, we are having. That's really interesting. Um, and it brings me to my next question nicely of, of where do you see the financing the circular economy going from here in future, um, both at EIB and, and in the industry more broadly? Well, we need to continue embedding uh, circular economy considerations in our assessment of projects. This is uh, the, the, well, the work is not over. We need to continue progressing. And I, I think that uh, for, this is something that goes for uh, public institutions uh, uh, as ourselves, but also for pr uh, private banks. And progress has taken place, but we need to progress uh, more. And for example, uh, uh, right now we are very much focusing uh, in improving the, the material footprint of uh, the product assessment, something that uh, in the past, uh, 
did not have a, as, as much attention as the carbon footprint. And we, we need to develop methodologies because right now the problem that we have is that sometimes uh, our um, banking uh, principles, our banking methodologies do not allow to, to fully recognize this, the value added that can come uh, through circularity. Of course, a lot of progress has taken place and now we are more aware of this need and the need to support and, and the need to, to embrace sustainability. But the, the methods on which we, we assess a part of, uh, of, the, of the projects sometimes are still uh, linear concepts. And uh, sometimes the, the business models of, of circular businesses are, are very different. And we need to, 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 well, sometimes forget our lineal lens to focus on circularity and the value added that those projects can, can create. And of course, uh, promoting also uh, partnerships because I think that a public-private partnership in this field is a win-win. And, and I think that uh, uh, this is something that uh, I am convinced we will continue to, to grow and become a mainstream. Great, thank you for that really interesting discussion. It was really interesting to hear about all of the diverse projects that you're financing and also your ambitious plans for the future. Also excited to see where the material footprint assessment work goes uh, among everything else. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. And if you want to watch more of these sessions in our series on financing the circular economy, you can watch on our summit site or on our social media channels. Um, if you want to dive into this topic in even more detail, we've recently published a paper which gives many more examples of circular economy financing in action, which you can find on the Ellen MacArthur Foundation website.